Welcome everybody uh, to officially day two of journaling. Uh, thank you again for uh, being here yesterday. I'm excited to uh, continue to connect with you and uh, continue this uh, little journey. I, I hope yesterday or today for some of you, uh, you had a good start to the... Uh, Phil says, it seems like the, the camera is broken. His camera is broken. Okay, I feel, I'm glad your camera is broken, not mine at the moment, as I, I do have some visuals that I want to show, but I can see your name and I'm glad you're here. Anyways, as I was saying, I'm, I am uh, hoping that uh, you had a good start to your journaling. And before we dive into today's journaling, if anything came up for you uh, yesterday that you'd like to share, feel free to jump in the chat uh, and, and share what that was. And if not, I would love in the chat just uh, one line, one word. How are you uh, feeling right now? And uh, uh, what mindset are you bringing into today's uh, call, day two? And uh, as, uh, as you're typing there, a couple of uh, housekeeping things. Uh, as you can tell, I'm recording right now, but sometimes because I don't have it set up on automatic, uh, I forget. If I ever forget, please <laughs> note uh, if I'm not recording and, and let me know. Uh, worst case scenario, I would always uh, refilm this, re-record this, and, uh, and upload it uh, either way. Other than that, I see... Uh, that we're all here now. Uh, I see Phil uh, without a camera, of course, Maya, Madalena, Kristen, Kay, Hope, Ashley, and uh, myself. I'm here too. And uh, it seems like Ashley's feeling energized, uh, Phil feeling uh, contemplative, uh, Kay is feeling hopeful, uh, Kristen is good and curious, Hope is calm, Madalena is happy. Uh, all wonderful things. Nice. Maya says, I'm smack dab in the middle of the cross and ready to learn. Well, so am I. And I thought I would start today's uh, journaling uh, talk session by sharing uh, a small little, I almost dropped the book, <laughs> a small little uh, piece from, from this book. It's called uh, Zen is Right Here. It's a, a small pocket book, really easy to read. It has all these small stories about um, a Zen teacher who uh, moved from Japan to San Francisco and he started teaching there. And um, uh, the first paragraph of this book is just that little, uh, says the following. One morning when we were sitting in Zazen, which is meditation, uh, Suzuki Roshi, who's the teacher, gave a brief impromptu talk in which he said, each of you is perfect the way you are and you can use a little improvement. So that is exactly uh, how I hope we can enter today's uh, journaling session, realizing that everything that is, everything that you are, everything that you're experiencing is perfect the way that it is yet it can be improved. The question is, how are we going to improve? What does it look like? What does it feel like? What can we um, expect out of our improvement? Is having an expectation in our improvement uh, beneficial to us? Is it detrimental to us? How do we want that Im improvement to uh, affect everything we do, not only our uh, behavior, but our decision-making, our experience? And all of this, in a nutshell, in, uh, from my perspective, is being able to move from a state of reactivity to a state of uh, responsiveness. I have shared this multiple times, but I'm going to repeat myself uh, often because uh, as uh, journaling uh, is, it's, it's an uh, iterative process and you, you reiterate on similar things uh, on a daily basis in order to arrive at uh, new perspectives, new conclusions. Now, what does it mean to be reactive? Well, we can look at being reactive as something that is uh, 
quick, something that uh, happens explosively, something that happens uh, reflexively. Now, being reactive or reflexive is actually not a negative thing. It's not a bad thing. Uh, in fact, it's uh, one of our main survival mechanisms to be reflexive, to be quick, to be reactive. The problem is that a lot of times we are reflexive, we are reactive, um, we are explosive, and our reaction, in other words, our behavior, uh, doesn't have a positive outcome. Now, what is a positive outcome? Well, a positive outcome is one that affects us in a way that uh, adds value, allows us to move through a progression, uh, gives us a sense of fulfillment, uh, brings clarity rather than confusion. That's a positive outcome, and you can describe it in many other ways. But in a nutshell, that's positivity. It's something that adds. But a lot of times our reactivity um, can be negative. And when it's negative, it's something that subtracts. It takes away. It makes it feel less complete. And our goal is to, in our thinking, in our feeling, in our action, to become more complete, to become more whole. And as I've also said many times, being whole is being healthy. So we're looking for health. Now, how do we use this instinct, this natural ability to react, to use our reflexes in a way that can elicit positive outcomes? Well, this is where we need to move from being reactive to being responsive. If you think about the word responsive, it sounds like responsibility. And what is responsibility? Well, responsibility is taking ownership of that reaction. The moment you take ownership of a reaction, a behavior, a thought, then what ends up happening is that you become more deliberate. Deliberate, if you think about the word deliberate, is the act of delivering, bringing to bringing to the forefront. And the question we're really asking ourselves here is as we are journaling, a lot of it is going to be uh, done in retrospect, meaning we're looking back, we're reflecting on something. It's already happened or it's happening in the moment and we're only processing it as fast as we can. And thus, uh, we're, we're, um, we're behind the curve. And what we have a, a chance of doing here is noticing how that reaction, that reflection moved us and how and where it's delivering for us, whether it's positive or negative. And with that noticing, being able to make some changes. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to move from being uh, fully reflexive to being more deliberate and in the action of becoming aware of how we are reflexive through our deliberate practice of, in this case, journaling, what will end up happening is that we're not only taking up more responsibility, taking more ownership of our reflections, but we're also changing them. And how are we changing them? Well, this is happening in our brains. And the brain uh, is designed for many things. Uh, one of them is for action, for movement. And the other one is for uh, regulating our bodies, our physiology. And the way that our, uh, bot, uh, our brain sorry, regulates our physiology is by predicting. Our body is sending signals to the brain something's happening internally, it's sending signals to the brain. Our environment is sending signals to the brain through our senses. And the brain is using uh, previous data, previous experiences to predict what's gonna happen next. I'm going to uh, say something that I may be misquoting. So uh, somebody's gonna have to fact check me and I'm, I can look it up later, but I believe there's something like uh, a six to seven second window where the brain and the body 
knows the next action, the next step we're going to take before we do. Now, who is we? We is the observer. We is the conscious mind. If that's the case, realize that we're always in a reflexive mode. But the more aware we can become of this behavior, this natural way of operating that our body has programmed in ourselves, uh, the more we can participate in a meaningful way. Now, meaning is a, is a big uh, word here because one of the things that the, the brain does in order to uh, establish meaning for us is to create emotions. And emotions are the experiences that we have around our concepts, our mental models. In other words, our feelings. I said this yesterday, but I'm going to say it again. And this is not fully accurate. It's, it's uh, way more complex than how I'm going to say it. But a feeling is a mental model, a mental concept. An emotion is the embodiment of that. It's the experience of that feeling. Now, a quick aside, just so we know what a concept is, a concept is created through categories. A category is taking similar things and grouping them together. So if you can imagine the following. Imagine uh, different ge geometrical shapes. You have triangles, you have squares, you have circles, and you have a bunch of them in different sizes. If you were to categorize triangles, you would take those that look geometrically similar, although they are different in size, and you would take that category and you would create a mental model of what a triangle looks like. And one of the most amazing things that our brain can do is our brain can adapt these uh, triangles into uh, different uh, objects and shapes. For example, you can relate that category, that mental concept into a pyramid. A pyramid has four sides. So it would be four triangles leaning and meeting at the peak of that. You can think about um, a cone, an ice cream cone. If you flip it upside uh, or upside down, yes, you would have a, from a 2D perspective, a triangle, even though it has a circular surface. This granularity, this adaptability is what makes the conversation around emotions so complicated. But knowing that what we're doing constantly is picking up senses from the outside, from our environment, from our social interactions, from that which we have consumed, and then internally, and our brain is predicting and creating an emotion that's going to elicit an action, is key for becoming more aware, becoming more deliberate. And what are we doing by becoming more conscious, more aware? Well, we are assisting our brain in becoming better predictors, better decision makers. Cool. If this makes sense so far, just give me a thumbs up. I can see you in the video. If it doesn't make sense, comment in the chat. Now, the emotion is not something that is um, there uh, to, to simply be there. It's actually the rudder. It's the steering wheel for our emotions. And we want to learn how to grab that rudder, grab that steering wheel, and start to work with our emotions in a way that are going to elicit positive outcomes, like I was saying earlier, rather than eliciting uh, the negative ones. In other words, we're going to um, learn to drive uh, our bodies, our beings. And that's what we're really practicing here with the journaling. This is giving us access to that. And I'm going to share something with you, and uh, I'll tell you after I show you why I'm sharing it. And this is something, it's going to be a question, and you've probably seen this picture before, and uh, I'm going to ask the question. I'm just going to read the question that's on the uh, screen when I share the screen. And in the, in the chat, just um, try to answer the question that shows up, and let's see what happens here. Okay, let's see if I can share this with you. 
Okay, hopefully everybody can see uh, this picture. Now in the chat, what emotion are you seeing? What emotion are you seeing? All right, excited, angry, excited, angry, frustration, winning, succeeded, glory. Cool. So we have uh, some of you who have uh, the same responses, uh, but they fall on different uh, sides of the spectrum. Remember our arousal, uh, the valence arousal model from yesterday. Some of you guys are on the left side. Some of you guys are on the right side. Now let's just reveal what uh, this picture is actually feeling. What it's feeling is victory. This is Serena Williams winning uh, a tournament. Now, why do I share this? Well, I share this because our interpretation of our physical expression of an emotion tends to be faulty. Our brain is highly deceiving. And if it's highly deceiving with others, I can guarantee you that it's highly deceiving with ourselves. The other thing that has been uh, become very clear over the last um, uh, decade in uh, neuroscience and in psychology is that the way that we physically express ourselves is not directly correlated to how we feel. It's not directly correlated to the emotion that we're experiencing in this moment. You can be very sad and have a smile on your face. You can be angry and you don't need to um, be loud. You can be very quiet. You can even be in a situation where you're scared to death and you can laugh. To understand that our bodies and the reflection of our emotions is different for every single one of us is key for being able to use this universal prescription that I'm giving you. I'm saying this is how we're going to journal for the next 21 days in a way that is personalized for you. And uh, these, these are simply uh, words of encouragement now to take full ownership of the exploration of these emotions uh, on the paper. And this is where uh, I think it's important that we anchor uh, today's journaling in the following quote by Lisa Feldman Barrett, which is that emotions aren't triggered, they are made. The emotion occurs before the action. Even when you are in, let's say you're in a heated conversation with somebody, your emotion that you're experiencing is a prediction from what you think is going to happen in that conversation. And this is why the, the saying that nobody can make you feel a certain way is so true. So we're gonna use this a little bit in our uh, journaling today uh, because today's journaling is uh, all about reflecting on what our body is experiencing. And the way that we're going to start, uh, just like we did yesterday, we're going to write the date at the top. And I wrote day two right here. And then here comes the first uh, and most important aspect of today. We're going to use the valence arousal model, that circle with the uh, vertical and horizontal line, the little bullseye. And we're going to place it at the top right of our page at the top right and as you place it on your top on the top right you're going to mark where you fall within your emotions at this very moment where do you land on that model right now and then we're going to start the actual journaling and the first question I want you to start journaling on and, and uh, working with is how does this emotion, the emotion that you just selected on the valence arousal model, how does this emotion feel 
in your body? What are the sensations? And I want you to specifically start with your head. I want you to scan your head. Do you feel like you have a relaxed forehead? Is your jaw clenched? Are you salivating? Do you have a dry mouth? Does your, does your head feel compressed? Does it feel uh, expanded? Does it feel light? Does it feel heavy? How does it feel? I want you to describe. Describe how your head feels. Then I want you to go to the torso and from the bottom, from the top of your neck, sorry, all the way down to your hips, I want you to describe what are your experience that, there. I want you to scan your whole body, your shoulders, your chest, your abdomen, your back, outside, inside, the skin, under the skin. Then I want you to um, uh, describe how your arms are feeling. For example, right now, I think I had a little bit too much coffee, so my hands feel a little tingly. <laughs> describe that. I, I have stability, but it, it's a little tingly. Just describe how that tingle feels. Then I want you to describe um, your hips, your legs. After you've, through a stream of conscience, described all those little parts, you've done that scan, I want you to put the pen down. I want you to sit up. And I want you to pay attention to your breath. And for 10 to 20 seconds, simply try to feel your breath. You can feel the inhale, the exhale. You can feel the, uh, the belly expanding. You can feel uh, maybe that it's shallow, maybe that it's deep, maybe that it's um, a little shaky. Maybe it feels compressed and restricted. Maybe it feels super liberated. Maybe you just came back from a run and you're still uh, sucking wind, so to speak. Whatever it is that you're experiencing, just feel that. And then you're gonna grab the pen again and you're going to describe, and this is the next prompt, how is your breathing feeling? What is the sensation of that breathing? Can you describe it? Can you describe it the same way that you were describing your head, your torso, your arms, your legs? At first, you may be describing the actions, how it looks, how it's moving. But if it gets to the point where you start to notice the, your mind, the pen, taking you to a place where you're starting to relate it to something else, oh, it feels like uh, uh, a summer breeze. <laughs> okay, you can get poetic. Or it feels like um, uh, a shock wave. If you start to create analogies, uh, allow yourself to go there. Let yourself be a little creative. And right now, I'm, I'm specifically uh, looking at Kay, uh, and I'm not going to put you on the spot. Don't worry. <laughs> but you are uh, poetic, and you're, you're great with words. So if your body goes, if your pen goes there, if your mind goes there, allow that to happen. Allow yourself to describe your breath through analogies. And why is this important? Because remember... One of the things that our brain does in order to uh, create our emotions, to make our emotions, is to use the sensory data externally and internally and finding similarities from past experiences and the present one to predict. In other words, through your creative artistic expression that is coming out in the pen just in describing your breath, you are helping the brain, you're assisting the brain in making better predictions. And you're doing this by saying, I am your partner in these predictions. And I'm accessing it through my imagination right now by aligning with what is happening physically in this moment. After you describe that, which can be a one sentence, it doesn't have to be a long paragraph. This can be just a little bit, just allow yourself to go. But after you've done that, you're gonna put the pen down again 
And then you're going to uh, pause, sit up tall, and you're going to now pay attention to your heart beating. And what I want you to do is I want you to see, observe where you're feeling your heartbeat. Is it actually in the chest? Is it in the abdomen? Is it in your wrists? Is it in your armpits? Is it in your neck? Is it in your groin? Is it at the bottom of your feet? Is it everywhere? Where can you feel your heart beating? And once you felt it in one place or many, you're going to pick up the pen again and you're going to describe not only where you feel it, but how it feels. And here I want you to try to identify whether what you're feeling is a pleasant feeling or an unpleasant feeling. And in regards to that, I'm not gonna say anything else because this is the segue into tomorrow's journaling, which is our interpretation of what is actually happening. We're starting to peel back the truth uh, of our experience. And that, my friends, is the journaling practice for today and the prompts. As always, if, if anybody has any questions and you would like to ask them, feel free to ask them right now in the chat. If you have any concerns or anything that came up that you feel compelled to share, uh, you can uh, unmute yourself or raise your hand and uh, share. If not, uh, then all I have to say is thank you for being here. Uh, Ashley, Phil, Melissa, Sarah, Kay, uh, Hope. Who else do we have here? Here we go. Kristen, Madalena, Maya, and uh, I'll thank myself too. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> thank you, everybody. Um, once again, I appreciate you all, and I will see you in the group. And if I don't see you in the group later on today, I will see you tomorrow at the same time, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. All right. Much love, everybody. Thank you for being here. And uh, yeah, as said, happy journaling. Bye.